Welcome. So this video is about my spawn lab, my culture lab. I wanted to show you basically everything that I put into it uh, design wise. And while that's the cool part, I'll start in the beginning. Uh, this is the gowning room, which is a critical part of uh, a clean room, having a room that you can transition from dirty clothes, not dirty clothes, but being outside clothes to being in the clean room. So I'm actually in a clean room suit right now. Um, we make sure that we leave our dirty shoes outside in the hallway uh, and then we will change our, into our clean clothes. Every time I come in here, I am fresh showered. Every single time I'm coming in here, I'm fresh showered with fresh clothes out of the wash. Like I'm not grabbing from the dirty laundry pile. Um, from there, uh, you can also see that we have the positive pressure HEPA unit. This is actually blowing in behind the wall of flow hoods where that's a false wall that's out about a foot and a half, two feet. So it's getting positive pressure in here, going to there. The positive pressure is flowing out through any cracks and a lot of it's redirecting through here. Some of it is also coming from the hallway there. Um, so that's that, that's the gowning room. We also have in here mops. So we have a dirty mop bucket, clean mop bucket. Uh, so we'll rinse it in that one, go in that one. And these are all sanitizers. So we use like quaternary ammonia, uh, star sanitizer, uh, mixed with like the Lysol solution or the Pine Sol solution uh, or Mr. Clean is another one that we use pretty pretty often. I don't use any bleach, no bleach at all. Uh, from there you can see the incubation. I actually don't have anything incubating right now. I just put everything in the fridge which is across the hall from here right outside the door. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually about to clean some racks and pull some more racks in here. Uh, whenever like say an order of, of either sterilized substrate or our spawn or a rack of spawn is done, it rolls out, gets unloaded into the fridge or gets unloaded onto the pallet or whatever. But I want to re-sanitize that before it comes back in. So it's not just rolling it back in. I, I wipe it down, I clean the wheels, all that. Um, so yeah, this is the incubation. In the incubation, you can see I have my air conditioner. This is my favorite setup if you're using a ductless unit. Um, is a wall-mounted ductless air conditioner and a fan underneath it because these guys just kind of trickle out right here And that's it. They don't really Distribute it very well. So by doing this it really blends the room air a lot better and circulates it uh, more evenly Which especially when you have a full incubation you really need something like that uh, going back on that I would probably do a ducted unit and do a uh, trunk with a with diffusers uh, like I have in my other lab, which I can show in another video. Uh, here is the UVC ozone cart. Things are hella dangerous. I can't express it enough. I used to sell these lamps. I stopped selling them, but uh, they're super effective. It is UV, so the light rays shine on things that you know blast it and kills it. And then the wavelength is like 168 nanometers spectrum-ish. And in that spectrum, it also makes ozone out of the oxygen in the air. It makes O2 into O3. And then O3 basically oxidizes and rips apart anything that's living, uh, including your DNA splices. I found that out. because so I was like, how bad is it really to breathe in ozone? Because the other day I uh, accidentally went in the lab after it running for a bit. It was off, but there was still the, the, the gas. And uh, yeah, my lungs were hurting. And then I was like, well, let me see what the real hazards of it are. And it breaks your DNA. So I, I think I'm, since then I've made sure it only runs at nighttime and I never go in after. Um, but yeah, so, so what I'll do with this is I will, depending on which room it's gonna be in, you know, position in different spots because the UV is definitely directional. You know, it has to be located close to the item that it's trying to sanitize. And it's already cleaned, right? You're not, this isn't cleaning anything, this is sanitizing. So I will put it either in my incubation or in my lab or even my other lab um, and then blast it. And the reason why I have the multiple tiers is to reduce shadowing, you know, because a shadow means that everything on that shadow line in the dark side doesn't get sanitized. So that's what that does. I also have a crazy loud beacon. This thing is super obno obnoxiously loud um, and beeps, you know, or, or flashes. So you know when the UVC lamp is going on. Uh, over here is my LC. I'm actually getting ready to do some LC mixing. I have it on a timer. So it goes off like every other day for like 20 minutes. Um, and I'm gonna get a couple more over there and LC supplies under there. 
That then goes into the lab. I have my cart. Still need to finish it. Right now I'm still using kind of a ghetto strap majigger um, to secure it to the autoclave and then to secure the cart to, or the, the top cart to the bottom cart. But it's gonna eventually get some latches. The other one outside has latches. This one was the second one that was built. I haven't gotten around to latches. So, um, and that basically just docks up to the autoclave to those rails right there and this thing just comes out and then I can pull it back, close the autoclave door, potentially run another load if I have a second cart, which I don't, but that is the idea of having carts like that. Um, so as you can see that it, the autoclave is in the flow. So this is flow hood air coming out and then coming up to the return. So there is a full unidirectional flow in here where I can feel I am eight feet away from the flow hoods and I can absolutely feel the draft of the flow hoods on my hand. It's like one mile an hour, you know, it's like 80 to 100 feet per minute, but it makes it to where this is fully enveloped in a clean environment, a, a clean envelope of air, right? Very important when you're trying to be making consistent spawn. Um, what else? So, Additionally to that, you know, I have my tables, nothing really big about that. Um, I am realizing that I need more outlets in here. When I'm working in here by myself, I use up to three impulse sealers, and especially these big ones, they basically need their own uh, circuit, which I do, I have its own circuit, but I'm also tapping off for another one, which is kind of a no-no, so I have to make sure they're never running at the same time. But basically what I'm getting at is that I will be upgrading this. I'm gonna be putting another outlet over there and another outlet over there, probably 220 and get some 220 models in here. So I'm not pulling stupid wattage of 120. Um, I got my torch down there out of the way. This is my favorite torch. It is the one that you can adjust as well. Not all of them have that adjustment knob. Um, so if I am doing a bunch of work, I'll put it up on the table and I'll just adjust it down to barely even being on and I'll kind of put it off to the side so it doesn't burn me. And that's how I do all my tip, my tip, uh, you know, sterilization. Uh, but if I'm doing a quick torch, I just do it underneath here, just blast it really quick and then uh, leave it down there. Um, that's pretty much it for the lab. I do have my, my sealer stand. I don't know if anybody's, you might have not seen this before, but this is the one product that we sell a lot of. Uh, it is an adjustable sealer stand for the AIE double jaw sealer that we also sell. So that is a product that I've developed and it is fully adjustable. It's really basic. You just got an adjustment knob, a, a locking knob, and you lift this up and down depending on what height you need. So you, you can buy that on MyersMushrooms.com. Uh, another thing is our uh, Julian date calendar. And then we have our little decoder thing for how we do it. I actually need to type this out, um, but we use label makers for doing our culture. So this is not a good example of how we're doing a strain. That was an autoclave batch, I believe. Um, but the strains are marked basically the strain number. The first two is a strain number, which gives me up to like what? 99 strains. And then the generation number, the Julian date, the day of the year, right? And then the employee number. And then also there's like the plus tax or like box, whatever, the last, uh, marker on that thing and we'll use that for other things like if i'm running them in different autoclaves i'll mark some of them as box and then the ones that run in the other autoclaves this one will get marked you know case just so i know if there's an issue that i can trace it back to oh that one came out of this autoclave it was this cycle here's the rest of that lot so i can pull everything which is very important if you're trying to troubleshoot problems like that uh, otherwise, it's a crapshoot, especially if you're running different, uh, you know, pieces of equipment. If you're running those two different sterilizers or, or whatever. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share with you all the, the uh, spawn lab. I've been working on this for years. Uh, really, it's, it's been operational for the last two, two and a half years. But really, in like the last five months, four months, um, I got the autoclave running good because it was, it was broke for like a year and a half. Um, and we just got it up and running like 100% basically, which it wasn't before. So we do have sterilized spawn available, uh, ready to inoculate. We have 
tons of it literally. Uh, I'll do another video about the grain prep. I'm still working on that process. I have the bagging down, but I'm working on the getting the grain into the building. I'm currently kind of manually doing it with a forklift and bins, but I will be transitioning to flex augers with load sensors and hopefully automation to where I can literally just like from my house get run and it will weigh out the grain, get the water going, get it up to temperature, load the grain in, and then when I'm ready to go, all I'm doing is opening a door and fill and letting it pour into my bagger rather than handling you know, 400 to 600 pounds of grain multiple times throughout the step. So just trying to work on the efficiencies, you know, you know me. Um, so thanks for checking out this video. Sorry I haven't posted in a while. I've been extremely busy between the company and the farm and repairs and just random things. I've been extremely busy. Uh, it's been good, but I haven't had time to do videos. So hopefully I can do more. Uh, still got a lot of projects that I want to share with y'all, ones that are done, ones that are in, in progress. So uh, it, it, until then, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I do a lot more like uh, pro progress photos and short little shorts um, there where it's not really the finished product, but you can kind of see what I'm working on. So thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you to all my customers. You help me do what I do and me and my family do. You know, my wife works with, the, with us too. Uh, if you've ever called and talked to Joanna, that's my, my beautiful wife. Uh, thank you, Joanna. I love you. And uh, yeah, take it easy. Keep on mushrooming.